Fortunately, it's not really a shocker. Government investigators have now found evidence of widespread fraud in the $8,000 tax credit for new home buyers program. Congress delving into that issue today, including my next guest, Republican Charles Bostad of uh, Louisiana, says this is proof that calls for extending the government program is a bad idea right now. Uh, Congressman Vistani, good to have you. What, what did you find out? Well, Neil, we found out that there is uh, real concern about fraudulent activity uh, going on with the first-time home buyer tax credit. We heard testimony today from the uh, Tax Administration Inspector General, as well as IRS and the Government Accountability Office, and it's a real problem. It needs to be addressed. And we need to, uh, if we're going to have this type of program, it has to have proper integrity to, pr to uh, protect the taxpayer. All right, but it doesn't, and we've got more programs coming down the pike, as you've pointed out in prior appearances in this one. Um, but they're still ramming it through, thinking that maybe, you know, the more you add, the more we'll address some of these issues. But they keep piling up, whether you're writing thousands of checks to dead people or sending them out to prison inmates or sending out prescriptions to folks who sadly have long left this world. Some of the prescriptions written by dead doctors, and on and on we go. Yeah, I mean, fraud and abuse is rampant, and if we don't get a handle on this, I mean, these are hard-earned taxpayer dollars at a time when we're running fiscal deficits. It's unacceptable. And uh, when you have the first-time homebuyer tax credit uh, being abused to the extent that it has been, such as four-year-olds uh, qualifying for the program, that's a problem. And uh, so what we need to do is uh, correct those deficiencies and some of the things that need to be done were discussed today, such as possibly third-party verification, which it's amazing that we don't have that in this program, uh, and a number of other very simple uh, things that could be done to prevent this money from going out fraudulently. Um, we had on earlier, Congressman, a speed reader who was going through the health care bill, all 1,500 pages of Max Baucus's Senate bill. There are many others, as you know. Um, and it's a thick bill. It took him about an hour to go through it, but he reads it about, what, 20 times the average rate. Uh, but he, he did cite a lot of issues here, that it does everything Max Balk has said, but it's big. It is big, and there's a lot in there. Do you think your colleagues are ever going to do uh, what he did and just read it? Well, I sure hope so. I can tell you, I, I certainly read the House bill very thoroughly, and I've looked at the, uh, at least what we've been given uh, of the Baucus bill and, uh, you know, these complicated pieces of legislation need to be looked at very thoroughly because, my God, you can get with all kinds of unintended consequences with this. And when you're talking about one-sixth of the U.S. economy, something that affects every man, woman, and child in this country, we better get this right. And um, I've got a real problem with the bills going through both House and Senate at this time. All right. Well, Congressman, you've been ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff that's come to pass. So always good seeing you. Thank you very much. Great to see you. Thank you.